I've been doing this for over 50 years, and during which almost monthly some man walks up and shakes my hand for keeping his son out of drugs. What? It's such a privilege to uh, be here with you, Bruce. Um, this is your creation. I mean, what was the inspiration originally for the Mings? Well, I was inspired by being around a bunch of crazy people. Okay. And the, the people were abalone divers that did strange things. I, I kind of watched them from a distance, enjoying the fact that they were always screwing up and doing some horrible thing. And then you wouldn't see them for three weeks because they're in jail or something. And I kind of like that. I, I think down deep everybody would like to decide to break the rules a little bit. And I'm basically an art student at that point. Okay. Many, many years in art schools. But I was all about fine art. When I came into this, I was watching some dune buggies that I had seen, handmade buggies from other people. And out, they were always made out of metal, pop rivet aluminum, or maybe a piece of plywood or something. And they were crude, and they were kind of ugly, but they were short with, a, with a big tires and wheels, which means that says fun right there, uh -huh. just the proportions. That was a, a must. The, the car had to be small with fat wheels because they'll have more flotation yeah. for traction and driving over the sand and so forth. So when, it, when I came about doing the thing, I was all hung up in making sure that it had a very strong feeling of adventure, that it looked as though it was going to go somewhere and be fun. Well, this, for somebody to do it by himself in his own shop, he has to keep it pretty simple. It has to be simple or you're not going to get there. So I was always of a mind to make sure that what I was thinking about doing was going to be always good looking and be functional. And I think this car still looks great. I just noticed some young people walking by and they were looking through the window just a few minutes ago and they were pointing and laughing and, and they're about 15 years old. You know, so I think it trans transcended several generations at least. You can, you can unbelievably, I've been doing this for over 50 years and during which almost monthly some man walks up and shakes my hand for keeping his son out of drugs. What? Well, I can smell the grass coming out of the bedroom, and but he comes out with his picture, look at the bitchin' dune buggy, Dad. And so Dad goes, this is what he has to do, and he goes and buys a kit, uh, a myers Manx kit, and, uh, and, and and an old wrecked Volkswagen. In those days, yeah. he could do all this for a thousand bucks, and putting it together for 1500 but it might be the top dollar he'd spend on it. So the, in the process, the bug is set in this kit, the kids sucked away from the drugs, and dad and, and the kid bond. Mom is, chooses a color, and the, yeah. and the other little kids in the family all love this thing. It becomes a family affair. Now, dad is long gone. That kid is 55 years old. He says, that's the buggy. I'll never sell it. It's a huge yeah. love affair. But you know, we have a club, the, the Banks Club. It's all over the place, the world. And 55, 5,600 members, I think, something like that. Yeah. And the thing about that club is it's so unique because the guy behind the wheel is always the guy that built the car. Well, sometimes the car isn't very funny. It's awful. Uh -huh. It's a horrible little car. Okay. <laughs> All you can do is laugh, and he comes along, and you, you, you walk up to a beautiful little car like this one, and my God, there's a lot of an admiration. So there's a huge amount of pride. The fact, if you buy a Jeep or a Corvette or anything like that, yeah. you, you can get a lot of fun out of it, but you can become pretty uh, uh, fussy kind of a guy. And I'm not sure what that means, except there's a lot of pride in those things too, but you can't have the pride of having built a thing. 
uh, where did the name come from? How did the Manx uh, come about? I was married to Shirley. Shirley was Shirley Myers worked at Road and Track magazine. Okay. She uh, was in charge of the advertising desk, and I'd worked on this thing for a year or so. And some of the guys had come down and seen what I was doing, so she went up to the office one day with a. A sheet of paper and went through everybody's desk and said, "We're looking for a name for the car." Well, out of about 33 people that worked at Road and Track, four of them came up with the word "Manx." Okay. And I came walking in about 4:30 in the evening, and Elaine Bond, the publishing, she was the tiger of that uh -huh. place. She says it should be a Myers Manx Bruce. I said, "Come on, Elaine, I, I'm a little too shy for that. I okay. don't need that." She says, "No, it'll be good for you someday." Isn't that amazing? And it was, and it is. <laughs> it's kind of fun, you know, to, to, to think that somebody else named the whole damn thing. I had nothing to do with it. I had an idea that um, if you're going to talk about a Manx, that's the tailless cat from Isle of Man. Sure. Um, I was sketching things and did something like this. And I'm not a great graphics artist, I don't think. I'm not in love with that part of art, but... Uh, they said we should give this to Bill Neal. He's a he's a great artist uh, and he lives in Texas. And I got in touch with him with a, a letter or something and made a sketches. He did this, and that's a Bill Neal piece of art. And the cat has become synonymous with the world's biggest doom buggy. What do you think about the new one, the the green electric buggy? I uh, I'm, you know what the first thing is it. It says they know who Bruce Myers is. They acknowledge that. I guess. Fully. Fully. Yeah, but it's so perfect the way it's built. It's so beautifully styled. I'm not sure I would agree with all of the style, but that's the difference in us. Yes. Artists are like that. and. Uh, but I think the size of it's a little bit much, but... Uh, it's a little big. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I just would rather keep it closer to the size of this thing, not say that I have anything to do with it. But it's wonderful that Volkswagen has come along with the agreement that Bruce Myers had something to do with the doom buggy. Children recognize this immediately. Isn't that interesting? A, a lot of adults, they look and they see, they come around, but they're not instant like children, little uh -huh. children, six, seven, eight years. There's a story about a Manx who was driving around the world and he was, had come out of Europe and gone into North Africa and he was driving south into Southern Africa and it came into a little village, a grass hut village and it's a bright red shiny Manx like this and the children saw the thing coming out and they came out of the huts little kids to touch it and laugh and as the car slowly went through the whole village it gathered up children when, yeah. they, when they got to the south end of the village there was a military checkpoint and there's a rifleman standing there with a big gun and the gate behind him and he sees 50 children in this red dune buggy come to him and all the kids stop and laugh and say goodbye and he just opens the gate and he passes them through without asking the damn question <laughs> like like you what are you doing here yeah. you're not supposed to be here but i guess yeah. it's all right <laughs> <laughs> if the children said so then, then it's okay well i think you nailed it with the design and like you said maybe the children are drawn to it because it kind of looks like a toy it has toy-like quality but, but and i have i have a son too and a daughter and i can tell they are drawn to unique vehicles you know vehicles that stand out in some way you're gonna make me cry oh <laughs> in 1994 i was invited to france and winnie my wife and so we flew to france and we get over there to Jackie Morell, who's the publisher of uh, Dune Buggy magazine called Super VW. He has 1,100 Dune Buggies, pardon me, 1,100 Volkswagens. He wants to send them around the Mall racetrack and he wants me to lead them with the Dune Buggy that he had a real Manx. In Le Mans? Yeah. Okay. So I said, I don't want to use any bad words, but I said, I'm not going to lead those anybody okay. anywhere because they all put me out of business he looks he says you're still angry 
Oh uh, yeah, I'm angry. 24 years, that's a chunk out of your life. They, they put me out of business. Okay. You read my book, you'll know all that stuff. Okay. And the, the putting me out of business from the 70 people, 25 kits a day and all this stuff, big deal, and, and down to nothing because I lost my patent in the, in the courtroom. and. Uh, unfairly too and I was so angry yeah so I just said screw it and I went away from the whole world of doom buggies and 24 years later here I am being asked to lead a parade around the Lamar racetrack he says you got to change your thinking what do you what am I gonna think he says well first of all of those people that copied you incidentally 200 or more copiers around the world probably half of them are dead and the other half doesn't give it. He says, what you're doing is you're wasting your life about something that's probably over with. And there's a chemical in your body that will shorten your life with by anger. Anger shortens your life. Mm -hmm. He says, the only thing that you got really from all of that is those two people that are in it. They're smiling. Those two smiling faces in that dune buggy will be something that you should cherish. Forget the rest of it. I want you to go home and start a club, write a book, build a new Max of the 90s, which I did all that stuff. And he says, you know, there, there's a, a canary in a cage. He uncover the canary. He starts singing to the sunshine coming through the window. Meanwhile, he's crapping on the yesterday's newspaper in the bottom of the cage. He says, you've got to learn to do that. <laughs> So forget the past, basically. Well, in that case. Forget the bad guys. Yeah. They, they're, all you're doing is hurting yourself. And the only thing of the two children in, or two people in the car. The, their happy faces are what you should be buoyant because of. And if you go home and start a club and do all these things, all that other stuff will go away. And it did. He says, it's going to take some practice you'll have to do a lot of pretending is but you'll find that life will be okay and I'll be damned if he wasn't absolutely right I am so used to saying to hell with everything just let me, let me be happy I when we have a club gathering line up girls I hug up hug all the girls well it worked you're 93 years old and I'm happy yes it worked <laughs> That's amazing. Well, thank you very much for your okay. time. Okay. You're great. Thank you.